What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Paul James here and today we're going to be talking about Amazon affiliate marketing. So if you're interested in starting an Amazon affiliate marketing business, go ahead and hit that like button. Also if you're new to the channel here and you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and after you're done, comment below saying I've subscribed and I will reply back to you. I'm just so excited that you're a new subscriber here and I just love that you're here. So. Let's go ahead and talk about Amazon affiliate marketing. We're gonna jump on the computer. If you're at all curious on how to make money by being an Amazon affiliate or you wanna buy a cool car like this one, then we should go hop on the computer and I'll show you how to make money on Amazon. If you ain't beefing about the money, then what's the problem? All right guys, so if you're new to the concept of Amazon Associates program, which is the Amazon affiliate program, let me just give you the basic rundown of what it is we're gonna be doing in this series of videos here. So. What Amazon Associates is, is it a program where you can, as it says, earn up to 10% in fees from things that you refer people to. So let's say you have a website about digital cameras and on that website, you talk about this Sony A5100. And what you do is you go into your Amazon Associates account, you link them to this page on Amazon. And when someone buys, you get a certain percentage of the sale which is awesome, right? Think about that. If you have a high ticket product like this and you're making 10% of it, you know, you're gonna make some pretty decent money every time someone comes through. Now, you don't start off at that high of a referral, you start off lower. I think it's 6% is where you start off at and then it goes higher and higher as you start to refer more people. Um, so you, you definitely get rewarded for the more people you refer. Now, the cool part is, is that some people might come and they might look at your digital camera but they might not actually buy it and instead they might continue to browse Amazon, you know, and see some of these recommended things or they might say, oh yeah, I needed something else on Amazon and they might search for something else and end up buying that instead. You still get paid for it even though you didn't directly refer that item. So Amazon has what's called a cookie. It's something that remembers the person that was referred by you and it cookies that person for a, a certain length of time so that if they buy something today or something, you know, in a few days from now, they end up still getting tagged as you as the referral and you get commission on that. Sometimes people buy the camera and then they buy multiple things. They buy, you know, a, a case for it, a SD card for it. Um, they buy a tripod for it, a gimbal, right? So you're going to get credit for all of that stuff and that's what's so great about it. So in order to uh, get a good Amazon affiliate site set up, it all starts with niche selection and that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video and if this video goes over well, I'll continue on with the series and we'll make even more. So you guys have to let me know that by commenting below and letting me know you're digging it and of course hitting the thumbs up button and of course subscribing and turning on notifications so that you get notified of new videos that I put out. Okay, so let's talk about selecting a niche. When it comes to selecting a niche, you need to do really good research and make sure that you're in a buyer's market. You also don't want to go too broad. I see people make this mistake. It's okay to go broad. I shouldn't say that. It's okay to go broad if you want to create uh, like an authority type site. But I think it's better when you're first starting off to go a little more niche specific. And what I mean by that is let's say instead of going after all of electronics, you just go after, you just go after cameras, right? We talked about the Sony A5100, right? So you could have created an authority site that was just total electronics. You reviewed cell phones, you reviewed cameras, you reviewed stereos, you know, headphones, but you could go even more niche specific and just talk about cameras or even just Sony cameras in general, and that would be super niche specific. So there's some pluses and minuses to both, but I'll just tell you that starting off, going niche specific is gonna be way more passive for you. It's gonna cost a lot less to get everything set up and it's gonna be a lot less competitive most of the time. So decide on a niche that way. So let's say for example that I was interested in targeting the outdoor niche. I wanted to target something about the outdoors. Now, we've got a lot of verticals here to work with. We've got hiking, we've got fishing, we've got camping, we've got um, climbing, right? So we've got all these different things and if I wasn't sure, I could go to an outdoor website like, for example, REI. I could look at the different categories, climb, cycle, paddle, run, right? So these are all different subcategories that would be uh, much better to go after rather than going and building an authority site just about outdoor. So creating an authority site would be just going after outdoor, but I'm gonna go niche specific. So today, I think I'm gonna focus on this niche here, which is climbing, because I'm, I'm an avid rock climber and I just think it's a niche that I can do well with and I'll resonate with. Now. You're not gonna do yourself any favors if you go out and you copy exactly what I'm doing in this video. 
you should take what I'm doing in this video and you should come up with your own niche because if you copy mine, chances are there's gonna be a hundred other people that are copying my example and you're all gonna be competing with each other and that's just stupid, isn't it? Because no one's going to um, get ahead. Everyone's going to be competing against each other. So you should go and you should come up with your own niche, but follow these guidelines for basically what I just shared. You know, start with a, a larger niche and then kind of niche down into that. Now we could even niche down further. I'm not going to. I think this is about the level that we want to niche down to. If we were to niche down further, we could be talking about ropes. We could be talking about shoes. We could be talking about um, blade devices, okay, which are the things that you use to uh, basically, you know, hold the bottom of the rope. So we could niche down even further if we wanted to, but I'm going to recommend that you just kind of stay at this level here, this kind of climbing level. So you're, you're niching down from the authority into a different subcategory, and then there you go. So now I can kind of talk about all those things on my website but I'm not talking about anything outside of climbing, like camping, fishing, or hiking. So I hope that that makes sense because it's kind of important. It's something that if you wanna have success with this and you don't want it to be super hard when you're just starting off, then you should kind of stick at this level. Okay, so now that we've got that uh, broken down, what I recommend you do is I recommend you have a spreadsheet handy. So we're gonna call our, our niche here. We'll just we'll come up with a title here. We'll say niche and we'll say climbing. Okay, so that's gonna be our main niche and we're gonna to start to research around this niche like what we want. Okay, so we want to uh, we want to find some keywords and we have a couple of different ways to do this. There are some free tools, there are some paid tools. I'm gonna break down a couple of different ones. Um, so one of the paid tools that I really like that I'm using all the time now is called Keyword Finder. And Keyword Finder is kind of cool because it not only shows you the monthly search volume, what monthly search volume means is it means the number of times that people are searching it on Google, but it also shows you the competition level for SEO and uh, it shows you other suggested keywords too. Now this tool actually costs money, so if you wanna go a free route, you can download a browser add-on which is called Keywords Everywhere. Uh, it's free for Chrome and Firefox. And what that'll do is it'll put a little uh, thing up here. I use this one too. Um, it's right here, this little K icon. Actually, you can't see it because it's cut out of my screen, but um, it would show up here, you know, where, where my little things are, um, but mine is just cut off because I've got a lot of extensions. But anyways, you would install that and then you can, you can use that. So I'll kind of show you both ways. So let's start with keywords that are gonna be good. We wanna find keywords that have buyer intent, okay? So this is important, so let's, um, pull up in that notepad to make sure we've got this down. So we want to find what's called buyer intent keywords. So buyer intent keywords are people who are in the phase of where they're basically just researching who they should buy it from or maybe just finding out the last details or trying to find the best thing to buy of that thing. So uh, example keywords are best, let, let's talk about climbing shoes, okay? Because we, we talked about that already. Climbing shoes, that's an important part of rock climbing, you gotta have good shoes. Um, so Example keywords of buyer intent climbing for climbing shoes would be like best climbing shoes. Someone searching this keyword is someone who is obviously interested in climbing shoes. Not only are they interested in it, they're interested in what's the best. They want to know the best one. Um, another one would be top climbing shoes. Basically saying the exact same thing, right, but in a different way. Um, now, of course, we could get fancier with this and we could do rock climbing. That's where keyword research is going to come in. Um, into play. The other thing we could do is best climbing shoes for beginners, right? So that would be another kind of long tail keyword. But again, we're just we're just starting with the basics to kind of give you something to go off of. Um, another one would be cheap climbing shoes. Okay, that's another popular one. Uh, top rated climbing shoes. That would be another good keyword. Um, you could find a brand name of climbing shoes, like let's say 510, and you could do 510 alternatives. So people want to find the alternatives of that brand. Uh, the other thing that you could do is 510 versus another brand of climbing shoes, let's say Scarpa. Okay, so uh, this versus kind of keyword thing is a good one as well. So these are some different ideas to get you going just to kind of get things flowing for you so that you can come up with ideas. Um, and obviously you're going to replace climbing shoes with your niche, but you know, the basic premise of the keyword, I hope that that makes sense and that you, know, you kind of understand that part of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over into Keyword Finder 
we're going to select our location, which is going to be uh, the United States for me. And we're going to do English for the language for me. And then we're going to start with, we'll just start with best climbing shoes. And we'll see what comes up for that. So we're going to do find keywords. Okay, so this is what keyword finder looks like. It's going to, and hopefully you can see it okay, it's going to show that we get 1,144 searches for best climbing shoes. Um, and it shows the SEO difficulty for this is 27 out of 100, and it's easy. So that would be one to go after. That's a good one. So basically, you can see as things start to get harder, if we click on rock climbing shoes, for example, this SEO difficulty is 47 out of 100. And if you highlight over it, it'll say, you know, 40 to 54 is possible, 30 to 39 is still easy, 20 to 29 is easy, 10 to 19 is go for it. So if you're trying to keep things easy, then you'll want to go and stick with something under 39, ideally. Okay, so um, these ones, rock climbing shoes, climbing shoes, carabiner, those are all just a little bit too hard. Not that it's not possible, but they're just a little bit more competitive. Okay, so let me show you the free way of doing this. The free way of doing this would be to head into Google after you've installed the Keywords Everywhere plugin and type in best climbing shoes. Okay, so we'll do a Google search for that. And what's going to happen is it's going to show the monthly search volume up here. Now they're going to be a little bit different. You know, this one says 1900, this one says 1144. So there's going to be a little bit difference between the two values, but they're going to be pretty close. Okay, now the problem is, is that this doesn't give an SEO com competition score, which means that you would have to actually manually go through and basically research and reverse engineer competition, um, which is probably a good idea to do anyways, uh, because basically you want to know how many backlinks your competitor has. So let's take this 99 boulders one, for example. So right here, 99 Boulder, best all around climbing shoe. Let's click on that competitor of ours. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab their URL and we're gonna paste it into a tool called Majestic. Now there's other free tools out there. You can just search for backlink analysis in Google and you'll find other free tools. Um, Ahrefs is one that I can think of, Open Site Explorer. Um, there's some other ones out there too. I can't think of them off the top of my head. SEMrush. Um, some of them are paid. Some of them have free trials and you know, maybe you can get away with doing a free trial. Uh, I just like Majestic. But what you're going to get here is you're going to see how many backlinks that specific page has for that specific keyword. And in this case, it has one referring domain. So it's not a bad idea to check that out anyways, but with Keyword Finder, they just kind of make it stupid simple to, to see everything. And they also break down, like if you were at rank number four, which is where this 99 boulders keyword is, you would get approximately 73 visits per month. Okay, so pretty, pretty cool stuff. Now, the thing that Keywords Everywhere doesn't do is it doesn't give you suggestions like, like they do here. So you have some ways around that. Uh, one of the ways is you can go into Uber Suggest. So Uber Suggest.io and you can type in best climbing shoes and hit suggest. And what's going to happen is you're going to see a list of suggested keywords populate. Okay, and with that Keywords Everywhere plugin, they're going to put the monthly volume in there for you. So you're going to be able to pick those out, which is great. Here's another good example of a good keyword too for affiliate marketing. Best Climbing Shoes 2016. So you can use these different 2016, 2017 keywords. Now, although 2017 isn't getting the same as 2016, you can see there's a difference between 30 to 320. We can assume that it's going to, it's just because it's, you know, um, it's just not all the way through the year yet. So anyways, that's another good example of what you could do too. Uh, here's another one, best climbing shoes under 100. So people looking for kind of like our cheap uh, example, cheap climbing shoes. It's kind of just another example or another play off of that. So that's another way that you could basically simulate what Keyword Finder is doing for free by using the Keywords Everywhere plugin, which is free. Okay, so anyways, I'm gonna finish the rest of my tutorial using Keyword Finder because I paid for it, so I really like the tool, I'm just gonna use that. But again, you can basically simulate everything I'm doing for free. Okay, so I really like this best climbing shoes keyword right off the bat, is, is great. It's got a competition score of 27. So what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna take my spreadsheet now and I'm gonna start to populate data in there. 
And some of the data I want to populate is first off the keyword, best climbing shoes. And I want to know the monthly search volume, which in this case is 1,114. And I also want to know the SEO difficulty level, which is 27 in this case. Okay, great. So I'm going to basically create some sub columns here. We're going to call this one keyword. That's the actual keyword. Uh, we'll say monthly searches. And we're going to say here, uh, SEO competition. Okay, perfect. So this is great. So what we want to do now is we want to see uh, what the price points are for products in this category. So what I mean by that is one thing you want to consider when you're building out an Amazon affiliate website is you want to look for products that are decently priced because you're earning a low percentage of commission. Remember, 10% is the highest, but you're going to start off a lot lower than that. I think around 6%. Um, you know, if, if you only make 6% of $5, I mean, that's not really a lot of money. So ideally you want to find something that's between 100 to $200 price range and it can go even higher, but that's around the, the good spot to look for. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go into Amazon and we're just going to type in uh, climbing shoes and just kind of see what the product price range is on average. Um, so let's go ahead and click all departments and let's type in climbing shoes. Okay, that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm just going to go into Google and type in climbing shoes. And I bet there'll be an Amazon link somewhere in here that I can click as well if I wanted to. Otherwise, this is fine. We can look over here. So uh, we have some shoes for 49, 34, 49, uh, 97, 119, 80, 39. So the answer is, is I can find some different shoes um, for, for between the $100 price point. Um, so 97, 50, 119, 80. Those are all pretty decent, close enough for sure. Um, let's look in, let's see, climbing shoes for men. This is kind of more what I was looking for. Okay, so $80, uh, 237 122 So I would say on average they're running somewhere between $50 and 180 bucks. So that's what I'm going to put down in my spreadsheet now. $50 to $180. So that's good. That's kind of what I'm looking for. So these are kind of my ideal situation here. Um, and I'll kind of explain what that is. So I'm going to write down for this average sale price is what we're going to call this. Okay, great. Average sale price. And I'm just going to make this look a little bit more fancy. We're going to make this uh, darked out here and we're going to make it white and we'll make it bold. Okay, cool. So now we're kind of organized and ready to go. Okay, so what I really like to look for is I like to look for a keyword that has a monthly searches of around 500 to 1000 plus. I like the SEO competition level again to be under 39 and the average sales price between 100 and $200. Um, so that's really the main things I'm looking for. And I want to go now and I want to pick out to start with six keywords like this, okay? at least six keywords that basically fit within those parameters. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to repeat this basically five more times. So let's go ahead and let's go back into Keyword Finder and uh, let's just see what we can find. Um, so we've got bouldering shoes, indoor rock climbing shoes. I'm trying to find like some easy ones. Uh, what's this one? Best bouldering shoes. So that's 320. It's kind of low, but I think I'm going to grab it anyways just because it's going to be easy. Best bouldering shoes uh, gets a monthly search volume of 320 and a SEO competition level of 26. And again, it's going to be the same price point because we're still talking about shoes. All right, great. Here's some other ideas too. You can see here women's climbing shoes. Um, let's see what else we've got men's climbing shoes a bit more competitive climbing shoes for wide feet that's pretty niche specific but doesn't get many uh search volume 510 climbing shoes 721 another one 721 so i'm just kind of going through and looking tree climbing equipment so that's a bit out of our out of our realm climbing holes rock climbing holes so those get some pretty decent uh 
search volume. A little bit on the more competitive side than what I'm looking for. I'm trying to stay trying to stay on low 30s, but we could go higher up. Best indoor rock climbing shoes. Okay, so we're gonna try another keyword now. I'm gonna try actually adding on for beginners and see what pops up there. Just kind of curious. Best climbing shoes for beginners. So we're at 109, not bad. So if you wanted to really keep things easy, you could go after these lower search volume things and um, you know just plan on going after more keywords, right? To make more money. Okay, cheap climbing shoes, uh, 34, 590. So I'll go and grab that. So cheap climbing shoes, and it's got a SEO competition of 34 and volume of 590. Now for the average sale price on this, I would say we should say 50 to 100 because they're looking on the cheaper side. So we already know that they're probably not going to want to spend $180. So this is going to go a little bit below, but still, still decent. Okay. Uh, let's, let's look in top climbing shoes and try that. See what pops up for those. Okay. Top climbing shoes, 56. So not that great. I'm kind of just looking at the green and the yellow and my eyes are basically jumping to the green and then next they're jumping to the search volume. Best rock climbing shoes. Cheap climbing shoes. We got that one already. Best bouldering shoes we've got. 510 climbing shoes, 721. I think I'm going to go for that one. So 510 climbing shoes 721 the competition was 32 and this is going to be the 50 to 180 range again all right so let's try and find two more this might be a good uh, chance to look at the competitive stuff uh the verses like 510 versus a different brand like La Sportiva. Now I already know La Sportiva is a climbing brand. Um, okay, not much going on there. Uh, okay, here's here's some really specific stuff. La Sportiva Mythos. This, however, doesn't show the uh, the keyword difficulty. But I want to do some research on it. So this is a specific brand of shoes. I actually have this brand of shoes. So that's how I know it. Um, so this is the La Sportiva shoes and Mythos is the model. So what I actually want to do is I actually want to go and and take a look at this. And I'm going to do the competition search manually on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these links here on the first page. And I'm going to pop it into Majestic. And I'm just going to see what kind of referring domains they have, just like I showed you earlier. Okay, <laughs> nothing. So... That signifies to me that it's probably low competition. I could do that again to be certain, but I'm fairly certain. Okay, here, it pulled it for me. It's under 39. Great. So it, it just took a little while to pull. Okay, so let's type in La Sportiva Mythos. We've got 1,000 and we've got 39. And again, Mythos, I think Mythos' cheapest model though, actually, um, is around $79. And I know that these ones go up to about 195. Okay, great. So let's look up one more. Okay, here's one. Rock climbing shoes sale 36. Let's go and do that one. Rock climbing shoes sale. And we've got, what do we got here? 483. We've got an SEO competition score of 36. And we'll just say 50 to 180. All right, great. So we've done our keyword research now, and now it's time to get ready to build out the site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually give you access to this template here, the keyword research template. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know by commenting below saying that you enjoyed it and that you want me to put out the next video. And I will, I'll put out another video and we'll continue building the site out. But your homework right now for this, if you actually want to do this and take action, Go ahead and download this keyword research planner if you want for me. 
And then I want you to actually go and pick a niche and start researching your keywords and pick out six keywords so that when we come time for the next video, you have everything ready to go. So I'll have a link in the description to go ahead and download that. It's absolutely free, no catch. You can just go ahead and download it. And I thank you for being a subscriber here. Don't forget to let me know you subscribed. Hit that thumbs up button. And we'll see you in the next video if you guys want to see it. All right, guys. Peace out. Take care. Paul James here signing off.